Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to review MX Linux. The installation process for MX Linux is very simple and straightforward. Um, I have a video linked above. And uh, the fact that the video only takes eight minutes to demonstrate the whole process shows how easy it is. Obviously, the installation uh, will take as long as it takes to download the ISO and um, how long it takes to copy the files. So it isn't eight minutes. It's probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but um, I, I demonstrated the installation in an eight minute video, and that includes creating the USB drive and installing to your hardware. So when you first boot into MX Linux, you will see a welcome screen uh, like this. And uh, there's a clock in the top right corner. Might not be this exact one. Uh, I have been playing around, so um, things might not be quite as they are um, out of the box. Uh, so the welcome screen has uh, frequently asked questions using manual wiki. Um, these tools, a tweak panel, forums, videos, contribute, popular apps and tour. The most useful things on here are the tools, the tweak and the popular apps, which we'll come to shortly. Uh, if you want this dialog to show up every single time you start MX Linux, you can check this box here and it will and if you click on the about, it tells you a little bit about your hardware and a system report, etc. So uh, MX Linux, uh, very fast, very lightweight, uses the XFCE desktop environment, although you can get a KDE version and a Fluxbox version. Um, this, this reviews about the uh, XFCE version, which is the main version for MX Linux. So uh, you've got a uh, wallpaper here and you can right click and you can open terminal windows. You can open Tuna, which is the file manager as root here, which can be useful for certain file manipulation. Uh, you can create folders, launches, etc., uh, And you can see all the applications. So you, you don't have to click. Uh, if I click this uh, icon down here, it brings up the uh, whisper menu and uh, that that's the most common way of navigating through the system, but you don't have to. You can just right-click on the desktop, go down to applications, and then you can scroll through this menu here so you can find all the applications that are installed on your system. And you can run a program by clicking here and typing the name of the program you want to run. Uh, in the top right-hand corner, you've got Conkey. We'll come on to that a bit later. And then down the left, we have the panel. Uh, and uh, bizarrely, you have the exit at the top, um, along with your launcher icons and then down at the bottom you have um, system tray icons and the applications. Um, personally I think the menu would be about at the top and the thing at the bottom but I'll show you a bit later on how you can tweak it to make it look exactly how you want it to. So I am using an Ethernet cable um, so I'm automatically connected to the internet. Uh, if you want to use wireless, uh, you can go down the left hand side here and there's, you can see I've got ethernet connection. And if I click on there, it will give me my Wi-Fi networks shortly. There you go. Um, so I could connect to Wi-Fi if I wanted to. So that's how you would do that. Uh, it's worth pointing out the applications that are on here. Uh, so uh, Firefox and Tuna, which is a file manager by default, uh, these are applications I'm running at the moment. So there's a welcome screen. Uh, I've got um, OpenShot um, running in the background. I'm about to do a video. Uh, so it helps to have a video editor open. And then I've got a simple screen recorder running. Uh, and yeah, um, that's for obviously recording this. Uh, by default, you get um, Firefox and uh, Tuna there. Uh, if I click on there, you'll see the applications you get by default. So uh, it's worth pointing out, you don't get many applications with MX Linux, but they make it so easy to install the applications you do want. It's probably a good thing. So you don't spend ages trying to get rid of the things you don't want. You actually just spend time installing the things you do. Uh, there are some good choices though. Uh, Midnight Commander is a good uh, file manager. Uh, and you've got a CD Ripper. Uh, and Clementine audio player. So uh, there's a few games on here, uh, a couple of development tools, Genie, so lightweight IDE. Uh, Codium doesn't come by default. Um, I installed that myself. I just wanted to see how the package installer worked. Uh, graphics programs. Uh, so you get LibreOffice as part of MX Linux, which you should for any distribution. 
Uh, I can't think why you wouldn't want an office suite. Uh, internet, uh, Dropbox doesn't come by default, uh, neither does Chrome. Uh, again, I'll show you why I installed that. But later on, Steam doesn't come by default. Again, I installed that by the installer. Uh, but Thunderbird and Transmission do. So Thunderbird's an email client, and Transmission enables you to download BitTorrents. And a multimedia um, handbrake I installed myself, uh, and a video shot I, or uh, sorry, open shot I installed myself, and simple screen record on Spotify I record myself. So most of the things on here I installed myself. Uh, really, uh, Clementine and Asunder are the ones that you get with, and the mixer and this MTP thing here. Uh, MX Tools, this is where MX Linux comes into its own and um, I will be going into this section a bit later um, but uh, this is what makes MX Linux so good and then you've got uh, the Office Suite which is LibreOffice and you've got a uh, desktop calendar, clocks etc and you can view ebooks and then you've got settings and system um, programs. So under system you've got Gparted if you want to um, manage disks and you've got Conkey toggle. Conkey toggle turns on the clock on and off on the top right hand corner there. So if I do that, it goes away. Um, and then if I click it again, it'll come back on. As you can see there. So let's look at some of the things on this welcome screen. You can obviously get to them via the menus as well. So we'll start off with tools. Uh, so this is MX Tools. You can find this in under the MX Tools menu. Um, so you, each of the things here you can find. So like Live USB Maker is under MX Tools here, but it's all packaged up. Uh, and there's MX Tools um, actually by the menu as well. So everything on the screen can be found under this menu, and it's under here as well. So if I want to run it again, I can click it from there. Uh, so uh, you've got a Live USB Maker. So you can create a live USB um, of a distribution. Uh, you can take a snapshot of your current running system and turn it into an ISO. So you could create an ISO of your running system and then fight it to USB and that way you can boot into that um, USB. I haven't tried it. Uh, it's something I might try for a future video. Uh, but I, I believe that's, that's what you can do with that. Um, uh, there's a disk manager for managing your disks, boot repair options, and you can change your boot options for your grub as well. Oh, perhaps if I type the right password. So um, when you boot up, you get a list of uh, boot options, uh, and this lets you choose which one you're going to boot into. Uh, and you can choose how long the menu stays up before it chooses the default option. And you can manage all sorts of um, uh, UFE boot options in here. So it's, it's quite a good tool. Uh, and very rarely you see this on any other system. Uh, user manager for managing users. So obviously I've only got the one on here. So you can add a user, you can uh, change the user password so we've got root and myself there and uh, you can delete an account if there's one that you want to delete and you can rename one which is qu quite a good thing other options um, you can change group memberships um, change whether you're automatically logging or not oh so the copy sync option copies from my gary folder into any other folder that i choose to copy into uh, so I can create another folder and you can choose what to copy the entire home, configs, document, shared folder, etc. So that's what that's for. And I can add uh, user groups and I can pick a user and I can choose which groups that user belongs to. So that's a good uh, tool. Again, not often seen with other systems. Uh, NVIDIA driver installer, if you've got NVIDIA um, graphics cards, codex installer for installing for um, audio or video codecs that you um, that, that you might need. Uh, it's worth pointing out I've tried um, playing audio and video without installing them and it worked anyway so I'm not sure what else that actually installs. And then we'll move on to Conkey. Uh, so Conkey is this thing up here and it tells you stuff about 
your hardware. So in this case, it's fairly simple. It's got a clock, the date, um, how much of my hard drive is being used, how much memory is being used, and the CPU usage. If I click on Conkey here, it'll bring up a menu, and you can do something with the Conkey that's already there, but it's all fairly light. So if I wanted to move this Conkey down the screen, I just drag it down by holding the Alt key and then drag it with my left mouse button. And in theory, you can right click it and make it bigger. But I don't think that's the best thing about this Conkey um, tool. The Conkey Manager allows you to pick different themes and widgets for your Conkey. So as you can see, I've got the one by default, and it's checked like that. So if I uncheck it, it um, disappears. But I can add different ones in. like that, which means you can style it and pick a theme that suits your needs without too much effort. I'm trying to find the one that I like. I mean, that's quite a nice one. Obviously, the more information that's shown, uh, the more memory Conkey itself is going to use. But that's quite nice. So that's Conkey. Uh, you've got dated time network, select sounds, and stuff like that. You can have a tour of the system. So if I click this, it's the same as this tour here, by the way. Uh, so it, it shows you around different areas of the system which is quite a nice feature for new users to use. And then we've got uh, a tweak tool here, and this is for tweaking your, your panel uh, and other such things. So um, by default, the panel's to the left. I like mine at the bottom, so I can do that. Click Apply, and you can see it now appears at the bottom. Well, I don't particularly um, like uh, when it was uh, vertical was the power button was at the top, not at the bottom. But by putting it at the bottom like this, you can see the power is now shifted to the right, which is good. And it feels more like a system tray and power button. And then down the left hand side, you've got the applications and the menu button, which is more traditional. Uh, you can restore the default panels and stuff like that if you want to at any point in time. You can choose a theme uh, for the applications, the window manager and the icons. You can choose a compositor. And you can change uh, display features. So in my case, my resolution is 1920 by 1080, uh, but you can change it and you can change your brightness, etc. And there's other various settings that you can change with MX Tweak. I'm going to come back to the package installer shortly. Uh, it's really good, but um, we'll, we'll do that shortly. And there's other utilities for format, USB and device mounting, etc. cetera. Um, but before we get onto that, let's finish tweaking our desktop. So this is the default wallpaper. If I want to change the wallpaper, I can right click, um, go to desktop settings and pick from any one of the wallpapers here. You can obviously add your own in. Um, let's see if that, I mean, this is the sort of thing that works for me. But by having it bright like that, it then affects your conky down the right hand side, making it less readable. Um, but it's up to you to choose the, the thing that works for you the most. You can change menu options and then you can change your icon sizes. So at the moment mine's 32, I can make them 16. And you can choose where they are. So as you can see, that looks a little bit cramped like that, but you can just make it the size that works for you. So uh, you can change the icon. So you can show the home folder, you can show file system, 
and you can show a waste basket if you want, depending on your preferences. And you can show removal, removable drives if you so wish. With XFCE, you can also change your panel properties. Uh, so um, panel panel preferences. So I can add more launches down here. Um, you can choose different. You can move things around. You can add more items and more widgets. Uh, but that's standard X, XFCE functionality. So the next thing I'm going to look at is this popular apps icon here. Uh, so if you click on that, uh, type in your password. And this is your package manager for installing packages within MX Linux. So there's uh, six tabs. Uh, Popular applications um, has basically curated a list of the most popular applications, so it makes it easier to install them. You've then got the stable repo, which uh, installs applications from the Debian stable repo. Then you've got the MX test repo, which has slightly more modern versions of the stable repo because the Debian stable usually falls a little bit further behind. And then you've got Debian backports, which is the Debian testing branch. Um, again, so you might have later versions of a package then it's under the stable and then you've got flat packs which are um, the flat pack packages of popular applications so earlier as you can see on my desktop i've got a google chrome icon and if i look in the browser section you can see that the list of browsers that you can install under popular packages and chrome is there and it's grayed out because it's already installed and firefox is grayed out because it's already installed it's not common for Linux distributions to show Chrome as an option for installing via a package manager. Quite often you have to go to Google's website and download it that way. So um, it's worth also uh, noting that MS Edge is also there as an option. So that's not very common uh, among Linux distributions. I quite like it because even though it's not open source, people still want to use these things. So by putting it there, you can either check that box check that button and click install or you don't it's up to you uh, but at least you've got the option and you don't have to go hunting for it uh, there's other um, applications so clementine was installed by default but you can install any one of these music players uh, uh, i installed spotify but i didn't install it from the popular packages actually i did but it failed spectacularly so I ended up installing it via the flat packs. So if I search Spotify here, you can see there's a Spotify client and that works. That that's the one grayed out because that's the one I ended up installing and it it, it definitely works. So you can look under games and you'll see things like Lutris, play on Linux, um, Super Tux I've installed, Steam. Again I installed that as a flat pack, I believe, as opposed to installing from the popular um applications uh, that definitely works i'll show you that shortly uh, and then there's all sorts of other applications you can install via the um, popular packages so as mentioned previously anything you don't find in popular applications you can find in one of the other repos so um, you'll notice there was no rhythm box if you prefer rhythm box over clementine so you can go to the stable repo and you can search for rhythm box and th there it is so I, I can install that now and it will work so let's try it at this point that's where this the, the final tab comes in it gives you progress on the installation as it takes place And it's quite verbose with the information that it shows you. So it's telling you what it's doing as, as it's doing it. It's, it's almost like you're running it from the command line. There you say, see process finished successfully. So if I now go to my menu, I can either click the application down here and I can type rhythm box. I can find it under the audio or probably out multimedia. 
there, or I can right click, go to applications, and go to multimedia, and it's there. So click that, and hopefully it should work, and it does. And you can see it's importing all my music as it goes. So flat packs are um, good in the sense that if you've watched my video about flat packs, uh, they encapsulate all the things that you'll need to run that package. Um, so you're not dependent on other packages. So um, to keep it brief, if you've got two applications and they both rely on the same dependency library, then if one upgrades, it might break the other one. So the best thing about Flatpaks is it keeps all the libraries in a container with the actual application itself. So that when you run that application, it is guaranteed to work because it's with the libraries that it's, it's supposed to come with. Uh, the downside of flat packs obviously is that um, you end up with more files on your system than you probably normally end up with because you end up with copies of the same file in different containers. So uh, that, that's the package installer. And so let's have a look at some of the things. Uh, I installed Steam previously. So when I, I click that, it's going to load up. What I do find with flat packs, they're slightly slower to load than normal applications. But as you can see, it's loaded up. I'm not going to sign in, but it does work. Some of the applications that are installed by default, let's have a look at those. So we've got Clementine. And that's an audio player. Uh, you, you can create playlists. Uh, um, but yeah, I can look at this song info. And it'll tell me about the song. It tells me the tags that it's got on Last FM. It gives me the lyrics from the song. I can find artist info. It should give some info about Alice Cooper. And so that's quite good. I don't prefer this over Rhythmbox, which is why I've just installed Rhythmbox. Um, but it's a good audio player if you just want to play your songs. I, I just prefer the features of Rhythmbox more. Uh, video players VLC was installed by default. Um, I've got some videos. I'll I'll test with one of my own videos so I don't break copyright rules. So there you can see that's the start of this video. Uh, to summarise, then MX Linux really easy to install. It's got some really great features, lots of good tooling. Uh, it's easy to install applications. It doesn't have many applications by default, but the install is so good that you basically install what you want to install, not rely on what the developers think you want installed, which I think is good. Uh, the con key is really good. Uh, I like that. It's really easy to customize your desktop the way you want it to. And all in all, I think MX Linux is a great distribution, and I can totally see why it's number one on the distro watch rankings. Uh, I know that's slightly skewed in the sense that if you want Ubuntu, you're probably just going to go straight to Ubuntu without going to DistroWatch in the first place. But having said that, MX Linux deserves its place on the top of that list. Uh, it's really a brilliant distribution. And that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, click the thumbs up. If you want to see more content from Everyday Linux user, uh, please subscribe. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.